Okay, so this is the first part of lecture three, which is nature of matter and energy. Right. So going to the PowerPoint. And it's called Concepts of Matter on Canvas. This is a lecture on what exactly is matter? How do we describe it? Um, and starting to go into a little more of the, the details. What is What are chemical changes versus physical changes? What is a physical property, a chemical property? So I'm going to skip to a very, very critical scientific law is the law of conservation. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. And this is very important because in a chemical reaction, whatever you start with, the number of atoms um, has to be the same as what you end up with. You are not going to lose any of those atoms. They might change physical state. They will change structure, but they won't they won't be lost. So it is just altered. It is not, matter is not created or destroyed. So matter is assigned as anything that occupies space and has mass. And it's that mass that's the most important concept because the fact is, there's no real stuff. It's all energy. And there is more space in between like the nucleus and the electrons in an atom than anything. It's all space. And yet somehow it turns into this tangible stuff that we see around us. That's really just energy. But it's the fact that it has mass is what defines it as matter. It's kind of constant. And because we, we really can't see these, we model them. And models are critical to the development and design and how we approach chemistry and how we put our theories out. We test those models and our models are supported and therefore we end up with a solid theory that continues to be supported, but they're still models. So our model of the atom, even though it's fully supported, we might come to a point where we find out, oh, we got some tiny little thing wrong and it gets adjusted. But these are pretty significant, pretty, pretty strong models. Been around for a long time. They've been supported by all of the experiments. So because they are so small, we mostly in chemistry study their properties. Those are what we can measure and observe. And from that, we extrapolate um, information about the world around us. This is a video. I highly recommend that you go and watch it. It's a lot of fun. Also watch the making of it and I'll play it during lecture, but not right now. All right. Terminology is very, very important in chemistry. So on a macro scale, we have the properties of matter and we have physical properties and chemical properties. I'm going to be breaking all of these down throughout this lecture, the bits of it. The three main states are solid, liquid, and gas. And those are have specific definitions. And the transitions between those states have specific definitions. We identify our stuff, shall we say, as atoms, which are the individual elements elements an element can be more than just an individual atom though you can have combinations of the same and it's called an element i'll get into all that molecules mixtures and also compounds all right first step the most obvious is the phase a physical state is the phase of is solid or if it's liquid or a gas a gas is defined they are very far apart and disorganized. Those are kind of your core description of a gas state. 
a liquid they are much closer together also a gas you'll see where it says it takes the shape of its container i don't like that i say it fills the container that fills the shape of the container because a liquid also takes a shape of the container but a gas will fill it completely it will create as much space between the molecules as it can liquids the particles are much closer together but they are disorganized and that is your critical one of your critical differences between liquid and solid in a solid they are also close together but they are organized you are going to have a pattern a geometry with a solid and it's the attractive forces combined with the repulsive forces that creates this pattern. So liquids are close together, but disorganized. Solids are close together, organized. Gas is neither. It's disorganized and it's as far apart as it can get, the molecules. Okay. This is just a flow chart. There are a few throughout this lecture that might help you classify where something fits, whether it's pure or a mixture, and whether that mixture is homogeneous or heterogeneous, where you're dealing with elements or compounds. So that's just one flow chart. All right, here's your best friend. The periodic table is absolutely your best friend. You will always have access to it and you will learn to read it in great depth. In Chem 1, you will continue to learn to read it in even greater depth. So let's start with, you need to know, these are the non-metals, carbon, phosphorus, selenium, all these in yellow, you do need to know where the metals are, where the non-metals are, because they have different chemical properties. So these are non-metals. These green are called metalloids. We aren't really going to do much with metalloids this class, but you do need to know where they are. It's this interface. A metalloid has a properties of both non-metal and metal, and all the rest of these are metals. These are transition metals. We aren't really going to work with the inner transition. They actually fit right up in here. There wasn't space. So we will work with some of the transition metals. Very important, group one and group two, which I'll go into following lecture. So these are all metals, metalloids in green and non-metals. And the, their classification, um, their chemical properties have a lot to do with the classification or vice versa. Okay. Another flow chart, when you have matter, if you want to know, is it pure? Can it be, or is it a mixture? Can it be physically separated? Can you boil it and get one off in a gas phase? Can you filter it? Can it be changed chemically? And is it homogeneous? What does homogeneous mean? Well, we'll come to that when I got to mixtures. This is a quick overview and then I'm going to get more specific. So our macro view is what you can see without instruments. It's what you can see with the naked eye. What are you going to see? You're going to see a color. You're going to see a texture. This is a gas. The micro view, where'd our micro view go? Okay. All right. So this is the micro view of the composition of this particular solid of your atoms or your molecules. This is your gas, your element here. And then we have our nomenclature. This is our, our language. This is copper, S means solid, chlorine, gas is diatomic. That little subset two means there are two chlorine atoms for every gas molecule. So what's an element? An atom is an element. An element is a single substance from the periodic table. It doesn't mean there's just one though. It just means that's the only thing there. This flask full of carbon gas is got countless carbon gas molecules in it. It's still an element because it's only, I'm sorry, not carbon, chlorine. It's only chlorine. There is nothing else in there. It's pure chlorine. It just happens to be in a molecule. 
it's still an element. We call it an elemental molecule or a molecular element. It's one species, one item from the periodic table, one creature. It cannot be broken into any simpler, simpler substances by physical or chemical means. So basically, if it's from the periodic table and it's the only thing there, it's an element, even if you have multiple of them. Okay. Molecule is two or more atoms that are chemically bound together. Now, a molecule Later, you're going to see we actually use that word to describe covalently bound atoms. But right now, the purest definition is it's a molecule, it's two or more atoms. So you can have an element, like here, that is a molecule, as long as it's two or more. A number of your nonmetals and hydrogen, by the way, even though it's to the left, we actually call it a nonmetal. Behave, are, are in a natural state at our temperature and pressure here on Earth as diatomic or tetratomic multiple, multiple atom gases. Carbon, of course, forms um, multiple atom solids like graphite or diamond. But they often exist as molecules, sometimes very large molecules, eight seleniums, eight sulfurs. A compound, on the other hand, it has two or more atoms, but it's different atoms. So this is your core definition, a molecule a compound is a molecule, but a molecule is not necessarily a compound. Compound has different atoms in it. So a molecule of chlorine gas only has chlorine. It's not a compound. So compound is two or more different constituents of your, of your molecule. So water is a compound. It's oxygen and hydrogen. There's the Lewis structure of it, which you'll learn to do. And there's our vernacular. And there's your macro. That's what, we, that's what we see when we look at water. This is what is in the microscopic. Liquid is disorganized and closed together. Steam, vapor is much farther apart and disorganized. So that's a compound. I'm not going to work with that right now. The next definition, so we have atoms, that's an, the individual item. Elements can be individual or molecules of an atom, of a, a periodic table item. A molecule is two or more atoms bound, and a compound is a specific type of molecule that is two or more different atoms bound covalently. Or actually for, for, for compounds, it also can be ionic, but chemically bonded. All right, the next definition is a mixture. Air is a mixture. And we have homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous means no matter where you sample, your composition is going to be identical the same proportion of every, everything that makes it up. So if I take a sample of air here and I go in the other room and I take a sample of air, everywhere I sample it, I'm going to get the same percentage of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and my miscellaneous because it's fully, completely mixed, equal amounts everywhere. A heterogeneous mixture is not equally mixed. So depending on where you sample, you're going to get different compositions. So a bowl of cereal is heterogeneous. When you take a spoonful here and you take a spoonful from there, you're not going to get the same mixture. Let's say it's Lucky Charms. You're not going to get the same number of marshmallows in the different sections of your cereal bowl. That's a heterogeneous mixture.
So this is the little pictogram you're often going to get with your Alex homeworks and also on exams. So be familiar with these and what they are. First of all, if you only have one color, that's one element. And if it's a single, then it's a single atom. So these are pure. Actually, each of these is pure because there's nothing mixed in it. These are not mixtures. So if it's not a mixture, we call it pure. This is a compound. It's also a molecule. It's a subset of a molecule. It has different atoms. This is a molecule, but it is not a compound because it's made up all of the same atom type. It's all, in this case, hydrogen. This is a compound. So each of these is pure. We call this a diatomic molecule. Our, there are two atoms, di meaning two atom, atomic. So be familiar with these and how you can identify them. So let's look at and identify each of these with the pictures. So a pure compound. Now terminology is critical in chemistry. Words are really, really important. They will also be your friend because if you use the language, use the words, you don't have to memorize. Okay, you know what pure means, you know what compound means, because you do have to know that. So now you can identify using this language. Pure means that's the only thing in there. So this can't be a pure compound, it's not pure. This is not pure, these are mixtures, all right? So these three are pure. But a compound is two or more different atoms chemically connected. So, this is chemically connected, but it's the same. So it's not a compound. This is a compound. So this is a pure compound. So that would be E. A mixture of elements. All right. If you have a mixture, you have more than one thing floating around. That's pure. That's pure. That's pure. So it's either D or C. This is a compound. It is not an element. An element has to be only one type of item from the periodic table, one type of atom. So a mixture of elements would be here. That's an element. That's an element. That's a compound. That is an element, but that is a compound. So it has to be C. A pure element, all right, again, it's pure, so it's not a mixture, so it's not D or C. E is not an element. It's it's a compound. So it's going to have to be B or A, and actually it's both of these. They're both pure. This is an element, it's single, it's atoms. This is elemental molecules, but it's still the only atom involved. This is one atom, so they're both elements. And ghosts. A molecular element, what's a molecule? It's two or more atoms bound together. But if it's an element, it's the only thing there. So that has to be A. It's an element. It's just one type, but it's a molecule. And then a mixture of elements and compounds. This is a mixture and this is a mixture, but only this mixture has a compound in it. So it has to be D. Okay. All right. My doors are opening. It's really weird. So Let's identify these. Look at it, pause if you need to, and see if you can figure out these before I, I go into it. Okay, so again, let's look at language. Pure means it's the only thing in there. That's pure, that's pure, and that's pure. That's a mixture. So a compound is two or more connected, chemically connected, atoms. So this is the only compound that's pure. So that's A. A is a pure compound. Molecular element. An element, it's the only item, periodic table item in there, but a molecule means that it's at least two connected together. So this is an element, but it's single, so it has to be D. And of course your mixture, the only mixture we have there is C.
Okay, so I'm going to stop here for your definitions and go to the next lecture for our physical properties.